Hello, welcome to episode nine of Creating Terraria in Python. Today, we're going to be creating our first enemy. So I got this image off of Google and I scaled it to the correct size. It is now 32 by 32 pixels as it is in Terraria. Um, and on the note of correct scaling, I wanted to talk about, um, or I wanted to correct the issues that I had with scaling in the original videos. Um, so our atlas, each block in our atlas was 16 uh, pixels by 16 pixels. And this is not how Terraria is. Each block in Terraria is eight by eight pixels. So I went ahead and adjusted the size of our blocks. As a result of that, our atlas is now 32 uh, blocks by 32 blocks big. So we have to adjust that in our code. So in the scene here, um, wherever where we load our atlas image in the gen atlas textures, we want to change this to tile size by 32 and tile size by 32 to ensure that the cropping is correct. On top of that, I also wanted to shrink the tile size. Uh, this won't have any effect on our code, but it will make it so they are visually smaller on the screen. Um, and I thought it would just look nicer for them to be a bit smaller, look a bit more like Terraria a little bit less like Minecraft. So we're shrinking it down to 32 here. And then uh, one more thing, the player is now no longer just one tile size. Um, it is now 32 pixels by 32 pixels right here. Um, and since it is 32 pixels and the um, tile, the sprite uh, pixel size is eight by eight, it is tile size by four and tile size times four. So now if we run this, we now have the semi-proper size for our sprites and they are still very ugly i apologize but it looks a little bit better now all right so now let's go ahead and create our um, entity or our enemy here and the enemy is going to have a base class of mob so i'm going to create a class of mob and mob just means mobile object so create that and inherit from the entity class and then if you're using visual studio code if you create the constructor and you press tab it should autofill everything for you now all you have to do is in the argument list just add a comma and and an extra parameters, um, which by default will be an empty dictionary. And then we'll just do if parameters, then um, self dot block group equals parameters at block group. All right, and that is all we need. So this is what we're going to be using to check collisions the same way that we did with our player. And so the same way with our player, we're going to create a velocity and mass and a terminal velocity. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So self.velocity equals pygame.math.vector2. And then we're going to create a mass. And for now, I'm just going to make it the same as the player. So self.mass equals five. And so this is going to be a lot of the exact same stuff as the player. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm just going to rip it from the player. I'm just going to take this. I'm going to take the check collisions and the move methods, and I'm just going to copy them, go to the mob, paste it, and then check for any issues. So here, yeah, we need to backspace that. And I think that's it. I think everything else should work, I believe. Yes, um, but I'm going to change this. I'm going to actually create a terminal velocity. So self.terminal velocity um, equals terminal velocity multiplied by self.mass. Okay, and now all we have to do is create our update method here. So def update, and then all we're going to call in here is self.move. And this is going to be applying gravity and then checking for collision. So now all we have to do is go to our scene and then where we're doing from sprite import entity, add a comma and add mob. So we are importing mob into our scene and then below the player, uh, it doesn't really matter where you put it. I'm gonna create a new mob object. So just do mob and then get, just put it in the self.sprites class. For the image we are going to do, uh, we have to actually create or import this image. So in the our texture data, let's go ahead and add this image to our texture data. So I'm just going to do shift alt down to duplicate the line and then do zombie static type, I don't know, enemy file path, uh, res slash zombie.png for me. And then the size is the exact same. Um, and given our setup, this is automatically done for us. So now we don't have to worry about it. So now we can do self.solo textures at, and we call the zombie static. The next argument is the position and I'm going to set it up pretty high. So you can tell that the gravity is affecting it. So negative 500. And then for the parameters, we are going to send it for the block group, the, um, key or the value I mean is going to be the self dot blocks the same as the player and then one more thing I'm just going to make a world a little bit bigger so there's more space to work with so when we're generating our height map we're when we're generating our height map uh we're going to set it to 60 instead of 20 all right and so now if we run it there you go it's affected by gravity and the hitbox is definitely very off and this is because of our new scaling for our stuff but we'll get into fixing that later but yeah now we have our player so let's make this player follow the, uh, or let's make this enemy follow our player. And so the way we're gonna do that is we're just going to add the player as a parameter. 
So in the scene, um, I'm going to add an extra argument to our parameters for the mob. So here I'm going to add a comma down a line and I'm going to do player colon self dot player. And this will add our ability to access our player object from um, within our mob class. So let's go to our sprite and let's go to our parameters and we'll set the self dot player equal to parameters at player. And all we're going to do here is we're just going to um, we're just going to do a couple checks here. So for now, we're just going to give it infinite range and then we'll work on a radius later. So what we'll do is we'll do if self dot rect dot x um, is let's say greater than um, self dot player dot rect dot x. That means that we are to the right of the player, then self dot velocity dot x equals and then we need to do, let's do negative, and we need to create a speed. So I guess we'll do a speed here. Let's do self.speed equals, and this would be in the parameters normally, but I'll just do here, whatever. Negative self.speed. And then um, what we can do elif self.rect.x is less than self.player.rect.x, then self.velocity.x equals self.speed. Um, so that should be fine. Now let's go to main and let's run it. And you'll see that it is way too fast, <laughs> way too fast. Okay, so let's go to the sprite and let's change this to 0.1 here. And it'll probably be a little fast here too. I think it's getting caught on the ledge actually, or maybe it's too slow. Could definitely be too slow now. Interesting. So that speed equals 0.5. Oh yeah, there we go. There's like a proper zombie movement. And so um, now what we can do is um, we can create a range for this because right now it's just like following us no matter what. And so uh, let's go ahead and create a range for it. But actually first, the first issue that we have here is that the uh, zombie is following us, but it gets stuck really easily and that's not good. So in the zombie, uh, or in the mob class, let's add a little section here in the constructor. I'm gonna call it states. I'm gonna do self.attacking equals true. I'm just gonna set it to true by default just for this example. And now what we'll do is after we check collisions, um, we are going to add a check here. We're gonna do if self.attacking and self.velocity.x. Um, and we're actually, we're gonna do the absolute value of self.velocity.x is less than 0 0.1, then we want to jump because if it's less than 0 0.1, that means we're not moving, which means that we're stuck somewhere. So it's going to try jumping. So we're going to do um, self dot uh, velocity dot y equals negative five. Okay, and now what we're going to do is all we have to do is just make that happen. So if we ever collide with something horizontally, we will set the self dot velocity dot x equal to zero. And this should all work. So we go to main and we press run and it's following us and it's following us. And then it hops up and it just little hops up these ledges. Um, and I believe there would be an issue here if we have a tall ledge. So I think what we'll have to do there is we'll have to have a grounded check. But let's go ahead and make sure this is an actual issue before we um, randomly do this. So what we'll do here is we'll create a ledge between us. So I guess I'll just do like, let's create an entity here and give it self.sprites and also self.blocks. And then for the surface, we're going to do a pygame.surface and I'm going to do this one width of tile size and then a height of tile size times 10 or not 110. And then we're going to do for the position, we will do um, 700 by, uh, and then I'll do negative 500. And then I think that's all we need to do. I'm actually gonna do it by 30 just to make sure. Okay, and now let's see how it reacts to this wall. Um, whoops, oh, I need to send it in a tuple form. Tuple, then send that argument. Run it. So let's make sure this is an actual issue. Yeah, it can just infinitely climb up the wall, which is not good. Um, zombies aren't supposed to do that. So let's go ahead and fix that. So for this, we're gonna need a grounded check. We're going to go to our states and we're going to do self.grounded equals uh, true, I guess. Or no, we'll do false originally. And then we'll do the exact same thing with here. So, um, oh yeah, we already have it grounded here. And we'll just say, we'll just add one more check. So if self.grounded 
and self.attacking, um, then this should just fix it very quickly. Yeah, it's stuck. It's stuck completely. And that's pretty much how zombies react in Terraria. They just kind of constantly jump. Maybe not this quickly. Maybe they have a bit of a stronger jump. So if we change this to like a negative eight, that might be a little more accurate. But that's looking kind of like how a zombie would act in Terraria. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, so now all we have to do is add a distance here because the problem is that this zombie will follow us no matter what so we could be a million blocks away and it will still be following us and you don't want that for a million reasons um, one that'd be really hard if every zombie in the game all came at you at once um, and two it's hard on your computing power that's just too much you know so um, we're going to add a range to this and it's actually really really simple so all we have to do since we made the um, the since we have positions here what we're going to do is we need to just get the distance between our positions to calculate the distance between our player and our enemy we're going to use the distance formula and the distance formula is the square root of the second x minus the first x squared uh, plus the uh, second y minus the first y squared um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and do that. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to um, go in our move method here and I'm going to do this if we want the absolute value. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do math.square root. Oh, and make sure to import math here. So import math, math.square root. And then for this, we're going to do the first um, parentheses here. So we're going to do parentheses we're going to do self.rec.x minus self.player.rec.x. And then we're going to do um, double asterisks for the squared and then by two. And then we're going to do plus, and then this is going to be in parentheses, self.rec.y. And then this is minus self.player.rec.y. And then we're also going to square this. All right, and then we're going to do, I guess I'll just do less than uh, tile size times 10, why not? And then if it is less than 10, then it is within range. So we will then do our um, conversions. And so I accidentally deleted them, but we'll, we'll just do it again. So if self.rec.x is greater than self.player.rec.x, then we're to the right. So we'll do self.velocity equals negative self.speed. And then elif self.rec.x is less than self.player. Uh, dot rect dot x and self dot velocity equals self dot speed and then else if the distance is not within range then we will set attacking to false and we will set I guess I'll set the velocity to zero for now okay and now if we run it um, actually I'm going to increase the player speed real quick just just a little bit just a tiny bit so I'm going to go to globals just to make it a little easier to test increase the player speed to five run it. So now we have an error here. Float has no attribute x in the mob here. The, oh yeah, I need to do dot x equals so negative self dot speed and dot x. Whoopsies. Okay, now it's running after us, running after us, and we're with outside of range. It's a little bit too far, or too, not a big enough range here, but if I'm within range it follows, and then if I get outside of range it stops. But if I'm within range, Oh, you know what? It's because I disabled, um, I need to re-enable, so self.attacking equals true. Whoopsies. So now it'll run after me, run after me, and it'll stop because I'm out of range, within range, and then it should follow us, even jump up ledges. It'll stop, I'm out of range, in, within range, and that's pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just mess around with the settings, get it to how the zombie normally is, but that's basically um, creating the, at least the scaffolding for the basic uh, enemy. And I guess in the next episode, we can get into things like damaging stuff. I'm not too sure now, but uh, yeah, that's basically everything to it. So uh, with that being said, if you'd like to join my Discord, uh, I'll be answering questions there. And uh, if you consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue making stuff like this, thank you very much. Have a good day. See ya.